Time now to spotlight D-Wave, ticker QBTS, after the release of its most advanced quantum computing system. Joining us now, we've got Alan Barrett, president and CEO of D-Wave. Alan, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning to you. Uh, first up, for those who may not be familiar with the nature of your business, can you help uh, our viewers? Because we have a lot of retail investors uh, who watch our programming. Tell us a little bit about uh, what you all do, especially given that you're in the quantum computing space and many people look at it as very early stage. Uh, sure. And Diane, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you this morning. Uh, so D-Wave is a full stack quantum computing company. We do everything from designing and manufacturing quantum computers to making them accessible both through our quantum cloud service as well as through system sales. Uh, we have a complete suite of software development tools that our developers can use to build applications on our systems. And we have a professional services capability to help our customers build and deploy applications. We are quite unique in the quantum computing industry in that we've selected a very different approach to quantum computing. It's called annealing, and it has allowed us to become truly commercial before anyone else in the industry. And by that, I mean, we have customers that have applications that they are using as part of their business operations today. So there are real world use cases now because that's one of the arguments uh, about um, quantum computing and even investing in this space is that the use cases aren't necessarily there yet. But you all have, as you said, real world uses of it. You all just rolled out something, Advantage 2 system. You call it your most advanced yet. What makes this so powerful? What is the use case here? Sure. So um, first of all, Advantage 2 is our sixth generation quantum computer. It is a more connected quantum computer with longer coherence times and lower noise, which means that we can solve larger and more complex problems much faster and with much greater accuracy. As far as some of the specific application examples, uh, we are working with uh, a company by the name of Ford Autosan. This is a joint venture of Ford Motor Company and Koch Holdings in Turkey. And they are now using our quantum computers to optimize how they schedule the assembly of automotive bodies. Uh, we're also working with NTT Docomo in Japan, Japan's largest cellular carrier. They are using us today to optimize cell tower uh, resources, and they're finding that with our systems, they can support up to 15% more cell phones per tower, which means lower infrastructure costs. Okay, so you talked about scheduling. That's one of the headaches that uh, companies often have to deal with, and usually it's an individual who deals with that juggling. Okay, I need this many bodies here, or this many people here, or you know, this automation here. What other tough problems are you all solving through Advantage 2? Sure. So um, I've given you some examples of uh, some very straightforward commercial problems, but one of the things that we have been able to do on our Advantage 2 architecture is show that that system can actually solve an important, useful problem, uh, basically computing properties of new magnetic materials that cannot be solved classically. This is out of the reach of existing supercomputers. In fact, we solved that problem in a few minutes, and it would take nearly a million years to solve that problem using the fastest supercomputers in the world, which are massively parallel GPU-based exascale systems. So this is the first true demonstration of quantum supremacy on an important real-world problem. We actually published that in Nature uh, Science, a uh, peer-reviewed journal, about uh, six weeks ago. What's at stake here when you think about that? I mean, you say it would take like a million years. Did it have to be solved that fast, one? And then just why does it matter in terms of, uh, you know, I, I mean, obviously I could see there are reasons why it would matter, but when you think about electronics or, you know, um, I guess medical tech. Mm -hmm. Well, in this particular case, uh, what this does is it, is it opens up the ability to digitally explore and investigate new types of materials. So you can determine the properties of potentially important new types of magnetic materials without the need to actually fabricate them and test them in a lab. This allows companies who uh, are using magnetic materials, they're 
for example, heavily used in sensors to be able to investigate new, better products through a digital platform. And then let me ask you this. You say D-Wave is delivering real value now, right? And so, again, as we led into this, we talked about how the view is it's sometime in the future, almost like the, you know, what we hear about more and more automation with regard to Tesla and the robots there. Some people think, again, that quantum computing is a someday thing. So what do you say to skeptics who say it's too early? They're wrong. And the, and the reason why, why I say that, it, it, that, well, they're wrong because we are commercial today. We do have customers that are using our quantum computers today in support of their hard business problems. Not research experimentation, not investigations, but part of their production operations today. We also have customers that have now started to purchase our systems for deeper investigations. Now, to be fair, there are different types of quantum computers. Ours is called annealing, and it is much further advanced with respect to commercial applicability than the approach that most other companies are leveraging, which it will take many years to mature. Okay, and so uh, to your point, you all uh, have revenue. You're not pre-revenue like some companies uh, uh, who are uh, getting started in this in this space. So you had a big revenue jump this year. You landed this major deal with a German uh, supercomputing center. So tell us about the drivers of growth from here and uh, how do you think about keeping up that momentum? Yeah, so there are two components to our business model. Uh, one is quantum compute as a service. And so for customers that care just about applications to solve hard business problems that can run better on a quantum computer, they access our systems through quantum compute as a service, uh, our cloud-based service offering, and pay us on a recurring revenue basis for that access. Then there are customers that are interested in deeper research investigations, leveraging our quantum computers. For those customers, they need more control over more of the operating parameters of the system than is possible through our cloud service. For those customers, we're now opening up the opportunity for them to purchase systems. Uh, our significant uh, revenue jump in Q1, uh, we, we reported 15 million uh, in revenue, which is a 500% increase year over year, was due to our first system sale. Uh, and so we're quite excited about that system sale opportunity now opening up for us. All right, and I don't know if there's an acronym, but when you say quantum computing as a service, it made me immediately think QCAAS, which it probably already is an acronym within your world. Um, I, I'm curious to know, okay, so, you know, uh, kudos to you all on that uh, revenue milestone, uh, especially the jump quarter over quarter. You saw shares surge significantly this year. I mean, you all are seeing shares up, uh, at my last check, more than 90%. So looking ahead, when you think about the next big milestone, for you all. What does the next 12 months look like for D-Wave? Yeah, so obviously we continue to focus on developing uh, more powerful quantum computers. So now that we've announced the general availability of Advantage 2, we are working on Advantage 3. Uh, and we're, we're actually quite excited about that technology as well. Uh, that, that will be for the first time ever what we call a multi-chip system. So up until now, we've always increased the size of our processors by putting more qubits on a chip. With Advantage 3, we will now start interconnecting chips to grow the size of the processor much more rapidly. And then, of course, from a go-to-market perspective, we will continue to focus on growing our quantum compute as a service business. And yes, we call it QCAS, uh, our QCAS business, um, as we bring on more customers solving more interesting problems. And finally, when I talked about that um, supremacy result, one of the things that we have recently uh, published a paper on is the ability to use that computation to actually create an entirely new type of blockchain architecture based on quantum proof of work rather than the traditional proof of work. And what's so important about that is as blockchain becomes more and more important, this could result in a very significant reduction in electricity consumption. For example, if Bitcoin today was based on 
quantum proof of work rather than classical, uh, it would be consuming about a thousand times less electricity to do the mining. So that's potentially an interesting new application area for us, but it's still very early days. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I learned a lot today about quantum computing. That's Alan Barrett, president and CEO of D-Wave. Appreciate your time. Thank you. You got it.